It's time for Regis Talks About Stuff. Regis is talking about stuff today. That's our new theme song. <laughs> for real though, let's do... I want to talk about cards currently in wild format that if they were to come back to standard would be synergistic with Voyage to the Sunken City. Let me give you an example. And probably the one I've heard cited most often we've seen in sunken city that mage is getting some new mech cards if we look really carefully mage is getting the new gaia the tectonic colossal after a friendly mech attacks deal one damage to all enemies so getting a few other mechs alongside that asharan sweeper mecha shark and trench surveyor so of course if Snow Chugger came back to the core set, this would be a great card that could support Mech Mage and getting more good, consistent Mech plays to make sure that these new archetypes have the support that's necessary. I always loved Snow Chugger. I thought it was a really cool card. Uh, just a little disruptive kind of body in the water elemental style, but with some Mech synergies. Has a great voice line. Cards like this. As old as can be almost, right? Goblins versus gnomes. We're talking about a 2014 release. Eight years old, but I think could still be a, a solid a solid option. Now, on top of that, that's not the only card that could come back. Uh, we could also have Goblin Blast Mage coming back here. Another mech synergy card for mage from Goblins versus gnomes. Back when mech mage was in its heyday, it was actually a good deck. And uh, I think this would actually still hold up. That's the surprising thing with cards like this one. Despite, you know, being eight years old, almost. That's crazy, by the way. I think this would be fine. It's got some nice immediate reactivity. It can go face, which is always important for cards like these. Solid vanilla stat line, like all of that's cool. Good follow up for some of the three drop mech stuff we've seen teased so far in Mage. Uh, Ziliax is coming up a lot. I was going to talk about Ziliax for a couple of reasons, so let's go ahead and talk about Ziliax, sure. I, too, would welcome Ziliax back with the core set. The problem is magnetic is a keyword that doesn't exist in standard format currently. Now, that's not a problem for me personally. I don't really care. I um, am fine with us having a little bit of extra keyword action in the core set, especially if they brought back a batch of magnetic cards so that there was, you know, maybe four or five magnetic cards. Paladin could also have some mechs with magnetic that would suit the magnetic mech stuff or the mech stuff happening for Sunken City. If there was a batch of magnetic cards so that it felt like a fully supported and fleshed out keyword in the core set, I would be completely fine with that. I think Blizzard tries to keep certain keywords, you know, um, tucked into their expansion for flavor reasons, but I don't think magnetic feels so distinctly boomsday project that it couldn't exist more generically. Some keywords feel very, you know, expansion themed. I mean, say dredge, for instance, or water themed might sound weird outside of that, but magnetic to me feels very fitting. I'm anti Ziliax. This card's all play in every single deck and I am slash was so sick of it. Yeah, I mean, it did get played a lot, but I never felt like I was bothered by it. It always felt so honest and fair to me. I, I, I hear you. I actually understand completely, but I do just disagree for whatever reason. It never bothered me. It always felt it always felt fine. I guess it sometimes bothered me when they'd stick it to a big minion and like take an enormous lifesteal swing. But even that felt sort of fitting, like, oh, I left that big minion behind and I'm getting punished for it. I thought that was OK. So I, I would actually welcome Ziliax, and I don't think Ziliax would have quite the universality today that it did then. I don't think the three healing would add up enough comparatively these days, even if you get six healing out of it, whatever. I don't think there's quite as much mech support. So I, I think it would I think it would be a little worse. So I would be okay with Ziliax, but of course we're all welcome to our separate opinions there. Another interesting card I've seen mentioned a lot is this fella the sea devil stinger you guys remember this card from mean streets of gadgets and he is the only warlock murloc printed previous to this expansion there's been a lot of neutral murlocs of course this is the only warlock one had a uh, health activator 
cheat out some cards at the cost of health if you can get the uh, Sea Devil Stinger down, which is cool. We also have some other cards from Sunken City that are similarly themed, of course. Let's pull those up real quick just as a reminder here. Uh, we got the Blood Scent Vile Fin. Change cost to health instead of mana if it's a Murloc. Dredge it. So a couple ways to cheat out some Murlocs here. Now, Sea Devil Stinger and Blood Scent are both at four mana, so competing from a curve standpoint there, but might be able to uh, still work all together there in a more mid-rangey Murloc package. So it'd be nice to cool to get some more Murloc support, but I actually don't think this card is that important, nor do I think it would be that successful. I just think it'd be kind of flavorful to come back. As Rectoner says, I don't see Sea Devil Stinger coming back with Blood Scent existing. I actually agree. I don't think it will be, but it would just be a nice flavor fit. A card I actually think would be more useful for Murloc Warlock coming back would be this one. Murloc Tasty Fin from Rastakhan's Rumble. I always loved the artwork on this card. Man, it was so cool. Uh, this is a bit of a reload for Murlocs, and I think that could be really useful if a Murloc Warlock deck takes off, I feel like it's going to have to be a little bit more mid rangey because you've got the buff that's hitting in the mid game off of the sunken card. You've got um, Chum Bucket, Chum Bucket, which I think is also encouraging a slightly more mid rangey style of play because you're going to be sacrificing mana in your first few turns to buff stuff for the mid game. If you want Chum Bucket, I think, to really fly. And I think a card like Murloc Tasty Fin offers you some nice Murloc specific card draw and reload that builds towards the mid game, fills your hand up for something like Chum Bucket. So this could be a great way for, for Warlock to, I think, to get Murloc reload. Better put Cold Light Oracle back into the core set. That could actually be another way to get, you know, Murloc themed card draw and reload. And I like Cold Light Oracle for my own reasons with fun mill shenanigans and stuff. Yeah, I, I agree with Lich King and Erzul that they probably won't bring back Cold Light. They seem to kind of hate it. I really like Tasty Fin. Yeah, I think this card's very slow for the record for modern day Hearthstone. But remember, cards coming back from the core set can, or for the core set can also be buffed. We saw stuff get buffed in the last round. So like this could come out buffed. I, I don't know how you'd buff this one. Maybe just increase the stats a little bit. I think it'd be too efficient if you made it notably cheaper, but... Could make it a little better on board, perhaps. Mischief Maker would be crazy. Funny thing you say that. It's on my list. Let's talk about Mischief Maker. Not related to Murlocs, but a really cool Dredge card. I think this would be sick coming back in the core set for Dredge because if your opponent dredges something but doesn't draw it immediately, you can use the Mischief Maker to create mischief. It can, it can, it can make mischief and steal the card that they just dredged. Or you could even pick your own terrible card for the dredge and put it on top of their deck. <laughs> it's like dredging something awful or, or punishing in some way and then put it on top of their deck. So I don't think they would do this because it would basically go counter to encouraging the keyword. It's like we printed this new keyword we're excited about and now everybody's just <laughs> ruining it with this single card. But I think it would be kind of cool to create counterplay and and some some interesting stories and moments. So again, I would probably welcome this. But all right, next up on my list, Shervala. I want to see Shervala come back to help support the big spell slash holy spell package we're seeing for Paladin developing in Voyage to the Sunken City. We actually got both Paladin and neutral cards supporting this. If we look at Paladin, for instance, we have seen uh, the Garden's Grace pop up here, giving plus five, plus five in Divine Shield. One less for each mana you've spent on holy spells, so encouraging you to spend a lot of mana on holy spells. Shervala, of course, also encouraging you to spend mana, giving you this sort of recovery tool as you spend more mana on spells. Uh, we've also seen just a big spell that seems good and stabilized, like Immortalized in Stone. Let's play some big spells. If you, if you commit to these big spells, you have recovery tools like Shervala. We also saw in the neutral set, Naga Giant costs one less for each mana you've spent on spells this game. So 
This is basically a Shervala without the kind of keyword upside, but it might be nice to see all of those together come into a deck to really reward you playing big spells. Now, I don't actually want to see Holy Wrath come back with this. I'm sure people are talking about Holy Wrath already. In chat, I've looked, yeah. Some Holy Wrath mentions coming up. I, I don't really want to see Holy Wrath Pally again. I, I, just not my favorite style so play to OTK people like that. But I just think Shrival is a cool card as is. Like, uh, just a zero mana rush lifesteal recovery card could encourage minion combat, slower games. Those are the sorts of things I like to see. So just Shrivala in her own right. I would love to see Shrivala. I just love this card. I didn't ever really play it that much because everybody's playing it with OTK stuff, which I didn't enjoy that much. Uh, next up, this one's funny, but I had to double check. This wasn't even in the game already, but Ancient Watcher. What? <laughs> I mean, really classic card here. I want Ancient Watcher to come back in the core set for Silence Priest. Silence a minion and summon a copy of it. That's pretty sweet. Now, the thing is, right, we already have Humongous Razor Leaf currently in the core set, if you look, which is clearly better both on curve and in general for a kind of bless slash silence priest deck. So keeping this would help, but I wouldn't mind seeing Ancient Watcher tossed in just to give you more consistency, right? You're not always going to have Ancient Watcher or you're not always going to have Razor Leaf. So having Ancient Watcher to have some redundancy there could actually go a really long way. All right, also for Priest, a card I'd like to see come back is Lyra. What if Lyra came back to standard to support Handmaiden? You know, we got to have spells getting played and drawing cards or Priestess Valish, refreshing mana for each spell and then getting a bunch of spells for Lyra and then playing Valish to get even more mana to get more spells off of Lyra or Serpent Wig to fuel your Lyra with a bunch of cheap stuff and like make a big Lyra and switcheroo to draw your Lyra. <laughs> so clearly we're getting a kind of Miracle Priest package for all this Naga stuff, but we're losing Sethic Veil Weaver and we're losing Nazmani Blood Weaver through natural rotations. So I guess it's possible that like one of those would stick around in the core set, but I think it's more likely that something else would come back to support them then we just see the cards that literally just rotated, right? So if they want some kind of Miracle Priest thing to happen, I think Lyra might be the fuel for that, basically. Okay, next on my list, I like this one. Blood Sail Fly Booter could come back to support the new uh, Hook Tusk card. The new Hook Tusk for Rogue demands that you've summoned eight other pirates this game, if you recall. Then you get these really cool rewards for it if it worked. So uh, you got to summon eight pirates. That's not always easy to do, but a card like Blood Sail Fly Booter could give you three pirates in one. So just a little way to get on board and really fuel your hook tusk as soon as possible to increase that consistency. We don't have to worry about things like Quest Rogue anymore, you know, giving us all kinds of pirates to get quest rogue done really quickly for caverns below or whatever. So I think this would be a cool way to increase that pirate consistency without certainly breaking anything else. That'd be cool. I don't think this one's likely because it's, it's, it's one of those that just rotated, but man, I would love to have Nazoth back. He's, he's literally still here. He would never be gone, but he's such a good thematic fit for Ashara and under the sea stuff, under the sea. Naga is a new minion type to revive. That's a great point. Yeah, we could finally bring back some cool new stuff. Kind of a mega quill board, Naga everything board. Even got a new amalgam. It's not probably good for Nazoth, but you get the idea. But I, I just, I don't think it's likely at all because he's literally about to rotate. Now there is the other Nazoth, of course. I don't think this one's quite as interesting synergistically. It's, you know, there are, of course, some Colossals and stuff that would work with this okay. This wouldn't be terrible by any means, but I do think it's a little bit less fitting, but I would take it. If, if, if this is the way we get uh, a Nazoth, you know, I'll take it. But, you know, even the names, this is God of the Deep. <laughs> it's just so fitting. Um, it's just so fitting. So, you know, I'll take this one too, but a Nazoth would sure be a nice synergistic thematic fit i think that 
is my list of cards that I think could come back to support synergies from Sunken City. Now, of course, we haven't seen every Sunken City card yet. There may be more of those that pop up. But from what we've seen revealed so far, I think those are the ones I would... I don't even know if I should say welcome, because I don't know that all those would necessarily be preferences for me, preferential for me, but I, I think they, I can recognize that they would fit well. Mech Warper? I think Mech Warper would be pretty scary to bring back. This is a card that just creates lots and lots of problems, right? Wasn't there one card in particular that got revealed this, that, that's really scary with this? In fact, <laughs> I thought there was something that made this really scary that we saw revealed oh yeah mecha shark for, for for mage this might be a really spooky play really cheese stuff out so i don't i don't think this would come back yeah it's it's still causing problems in wild exactly yeah galvanizer yeah i mean this would probably be okay i think it has created some problems in wild but i think it'd be okay in standard <sighs> copper tail imposter oh that would be a good any any storm coil setup yeah this would be a great on-curve setup for Eni. This would be about the only way that I, I think Eni's going to be a, a solid card, honestly. You know, I still hate Eni. Some people don't. But um, yeah, this would definitely help solve a lot of the problems I have for Eni, where she's, I, I think she's going to whiff a lot on turn five. Uh, Bright-Eyed Scout to support big spell decks. Yeah, okay. Draw a card, change its cost to five. So you could use this to support big paladin stuff maybe big spell paladin big spell mage one card that i is is currently in corset but i think could be absolutely nutty with the colossal for demon hunter is raging fell screamer this you play on four it leads you into a perfect on curve five mana z log of the abyss and this is basically in a lot of ways uh priestess of fury but like harder to deal with almost so this is like i said still in the core set it, it it you know it may just stick around but i think it's a very relevant card for demon hunter if it does so i'm kind of hoping it sticks around that said maybe we'll move on i feel like my list was was solid you guys gave some great feedback and thoughts about it that's for sure what are we doing right now we're waiting for you, Murph the Smurf. Congratulations! You're the big winner! You finally made it! <laughs> no, uh, we're just talking about cards that might come back in the core set to... Uh, he's finally here. Cards that might come back in the core set to support new archetypes. 